Alzheimer's disease is a devastating disorder that affects the brain. Right now, 44 million people in the world are living with Alzheimer's disease. And of that, about 5 to 6 million of them are living in the United States. Now I know firsthand that this is a terrible disorder to have. It runs in my family. And I want to give you information to better understand how Alzheimer's starts and then how the body, specifically the immune system, responds to Alzheimer's disease. So here I've drawn for you a neuron. If we could zoom way into the brain, you would see lots and lots of neurons. In fact, um, if you had enough time to count, you could count 86 billion neurons. Now you might see that there's some really distinct regions in the neuron, and I want to explain them to you because it's going to help you understand Alzheimer's. The top of the neuron, you might notice it looks a little bit like a tree. And if you were really into language, you might know that Greek for tree is dendrite. So up here, these are called dendrites. And then there's this long connector. This is called the axon. And at the bottom, the axon ends. And another word for end is terminate. So at the very end here, these are called axon terminals. Okay. One other thing I want to point out to you here is this region around the circle. This circle is the nucleus where the DNA of the neuron is contained, and around it is called the cell body. So you might be wondering, how does a neuron work? Basically, the dendrites receive information. Receive. And the axon terminals send information. Okay, now that you know what the dendrites and the axon terminals do, where does Alzheimer's happen? And the answer, unfortunately, is, is everywhere. So there's two proteins that go awry during Alzheimer's disease. One of them is called amyloid beta, and we're going to talk a lot more about that. And the other one is called tau. I'm going to color code these for you. So in most of the papers I read, I studied Alzheimer's for about nine years. In most of the papers I read, amyloid beta ends up being red, so I can't help it. Uh, but here, amyloid beta actually is produced by the neuron during health. Over time, the neuron produces too much amyloid or loses the ability to clear it with the help of other cells of the brain. And what that means is it starts to accumulate inside the cell body of the neuron. And when this happens, the neuron starts to slow down. It can't do what it normally wants to do, which is to communicate signals to other neurons in your brain that are all connected to a thought or a memory or a sensation. So once amyloid beta starts to gunk up the cell body, the neuron slows down. It can also start to gunk up the axon terminals here. And that means that this neuron is not going to be able to send signals rapidly to other neurons that they're connected to. Now tau works a little bit differently. Tau is more to do with the axon the axon is really like a super highway, so it can take anything from the cell body all the way down to the axon terminals. In fact, the longest axon in your body is approximately two to three feet, depending on your height, one that reaches from the base of your spinal cord all the way down to your foot. But see, normally tau is supporting the highway like cement pillars, if you could imagine the highway sort of supported in midair. So if tau ever gets disrupted, it's like somebody took out all of those pillars and the highway collapses. So then there's no transport from the cell body to the axon terminals. So between amyloid beta and tau, the neuron initially is slowed. So first off, 
communication is slowed. And then, secondarily, the neuron will die. Now, as we age, we don't replace the neurons in our brain at a very high rate, meaning that most of the neurons that are lost during Alzheimer's disease cannot be recovered with any of the techniques we have available. All right, so let's add some details. Here we have neuron one in gray, and it's communicating with neuron two. Now, you might have noticed two features from before. There's gray axon terminals, and they're right next to the blue dendrites from neuron 2. So there's a tiny, tiny space between the axon terminals and the dendrites. That's actually called the synapse. It's a very special space where neurons can communicate with each other. And usually they communicate through chemicals. They can communicate electrically, but they have to be physically touching then. So neuron one actually has a technical name. It's called the presynaptic neuron. And then there's the second neuron is postsynaptic. It's literally just indicating what's happening before and after the synapse, which is the most important part. So here at the synapse, neuron 1 is going to tell neuron 2 to pass along a signal to a different part of your brain. And during health, this happens incredibly rapidly and they would be connected together and working in sync. During Alzheimer's disease, those two proteins we talked about are going to start to build up. And I didn't have enough room before to draw what it would look like in greater detail. So here we go. There's lots of little vesicles in all of your cells. Usually good things are happening in vesicles, like recycling, uh, but sometimes bad things are happening in vesicles. Now, I don't have an animator, so here we go. Ooh, it's just like we're zooming in on what I just drew. This is one of those vesicles in the blue neuron. And here in pink is a large protein it's actually called amyloid precursor protein. And it sounds like it's going to turn into amyloid beta. All right, so amyloid precursor protein is in vesicles. It can be cut by other proteins in the body two different ways. One is good. One is bad. So let's do the good scenario first. Proteins are amazing. They have all sorts of functions. And one of the things they can do is act like scissors. So here in purple, I'm showing the good scenario. There can be proteins like alpha secretase that come along and encounter amyloid precursor protein. And they cut it in such a way that it turns into a really small, harmless piece of the protein, these typically don't stick together or clump together, and so they're safe for the brain. So here, alpha secretase. Now, the bad scenario, a different protein comes along. You'll notice based on the color coding that we're in trouble. This is actually called beta secretase. So yes, lots and lots of Greek letters. Beta secretase cuts amyloid precursor protein into amyloid beta. Now, a little bit of amyloid beta is fine. In fact, there's some evidence that it helps the axon terminals develop and potentially even function. But if we make too much, it's going to start clumping together. And that's where the trouble starts. 
So if amyloid beta here is produced at a low level, you're fine. If it's produced at a high level, it starts to clump together and the neuron can't break it down or pull it apart. So that's why it takes 50 to 80 years for this to develop because typically this process is normal and helpful. There are different types of mutations that cause people to create more or even have like a more active beta secretase. So there are genetic reasons why some people in certain families can get Alzheimer's disease at an earlier age. Okay, now it's time for the rest of the story. The neurons in your brain are not alone. They have a few cellular friends. Now, one of which is the astrocyte. Astrocytes actually take care of neurons. If you have ever skipped a meal, astrocytes can actually store sugar for you in the form of glycogen and then break it down and give you glucose. Um, just like if your mom had a candy bar for you in her purse, um, astrocytes can take care of the neurons during health. There's also microglia. Now you might see here that the microglia actually have these long, beautiful branches, just like neurons. Um, but during Alzheimer's disease, they're not in this beautiful resting state. They actually become inflammatory. And when they're inflamed, they look completely different. They actually have more of this blobby shape. And when they do that, when they change shapes, the microglia are actually going to be contributing to Alzheimer's disease. All right. There are another cell type called oligodendrocytes, but they're not important during Alzheimer's disease. Um, however, they're very important during multiple sclerosis, so you might see them come up in a video or two. All right, so what happens? I told you how those enzymes basically take amyloid precursor protein and they start to break it down into amyloid beta and it's clumping. So this poor neuron here in blue, it basically starts to fill up with amyloid. And then, remember I told you that the tau tangles are actually gonna start collapsing the superhighway between the cell body and the axon terminals. So tau's getting tangled up in here, in the axon, and then amyloid is getting tangled up in the cell body, as well as down here at the axon terminals where communication is happening. So over time, this neuron is going to die. And the neuron can die from just the proteins alone, so the amyloid beta or the tau tangles, but what usually happens is that the immune system tries to help out and ends up killing more neurons. Um, so once this neuron dies, or even during the process of its death, you've probably heard of amyloid plaques being the main issue in Alzheimer's disease. And that's because the disease has progressed to a certain point where neurons have died or considerable amyloid has been exocytosed or basically trafficked outside of the neuron. Now these clumps, these tangles, are sensed by your immune cells, both microglia and astrocytes. Now they can clean these up a little bit. Um, during the early stages of disease, microglia can remove these through a process called phagocytosis or cell eating. But then over time, microglia lose the ability to remove these plaques. All right, so then once these have been sensed, if you really are like deep in the weeds of Alzheimer's disease, these are sensed with receptors on the outside of the immune cells, particularly toll-like receptor four that very commonly is used to bind and identify amyloid plaques. Let's just write that out for you. Amyloid plaque. And now the microglia and the astrocytes begin to produce inflammation. Um, there is some evidence that an increased lifetime of inflammation will lead to Alzheimer's disease, which is why 
there are some studies showing that exercise and eating a Mediterranean diet full of fish like salmon or olive oil, things that have good healthy fats, actually reduce your lifetime incidence, your risk basically, of getting Alzheimer's disease. So now your immune cells are making inflammation. Inflammation are basically called cytokines. And they're small proteins that allow immune cells to talk to one another. And if you want some specifics, common ones found in Alzheimer's disease are IL-1 beta, TNF-alpha, and um, something called reactive oxygen species, or ROS for short, not rodents of unusual size. Okay, astrocytes are pretty much doing the same thing. Now, when the neurons in this general vicinity encounter these cytokines, they can be asked to undergo apoptosis or cell death. So here, microglia and astrocytes combined are going to increase the cell death of neurons anywhere near these amyloid plaques. So amyloid plaques lead to astrocyte and microglia activation, inflammation. This inflammation is going to start to kill these neurons right here. It can also sometimes increase the amount of amyloid plaques being formed. Oh, I hope that explains a bit more about Alzheimer's disease and how it works. Basically, it's amyloid beta protein and tau protein becoming dysfunctional and dysregulated and stopping the neuron from functioning properly at a cellular level. And then the neurons can die. And in the process of making those proteins and in the process of dying, the neurons activate the immune cells of the brain, microglia and astrocytes. And although they help in the beginning of Alzheimer's disease by removing plaques, towards the end of Alzheimer's disease, they end up contributing to inflammation, and then the inflammation kills even more neurons, and you're just stuck in this terrible loop. And right now there are no drugs to treat that, neither to treat the underlying protein issues, nor the um, immune cell dysfunction. So I think that's what needs to be focused on in future. Is Alzheimer's disease truly a disease of protein dysfunction, or is it truly a disease of the immune system? There's really evidence for both. I think that in people who have um, Alzheimer's disease happening early onset, so that means between about the age of 50 and 65, those people probably have more of a true protein issue. And people who are diagnosed later in life, so between 70 and 80, those people probably have more of an immune cell issue. And as long as we could come up with a way to boost microglia and astrocyte function, that might be more appropriate treatment for people with late onset Alzheimer's disease. If you have any more questions about Alzheimer's disease or other neurodegenerative diseases, please drop them in the comments section and I will have more videos on neuroimmune diseases in the future because that's primarily what I study. All right, stay healthy.